Hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, to do this is pretty simple. You just have to have the right tools. Um, two things to get this working on a Windows machine or to get it installed via a Windows machine. Um, you would just simply need a RetroPie image and a uh, Win32 disk imager. I'll show you how to get those two things and uh, get you on your way. So uh, to begin, uh, simply go to Google, type in RetroPie, and your first link should be this retropie.org.uk. Simply click that guy there. And uh, here's the website here. And simply click Get RetroPie. From there, you can donate if you like. Um, I'm going to be installing my RetroPie on my uh, Raspberry Pi 3, but if you have the RetroPie 0 or any older versions, might want to consider the RetroPie uh, 0 1 for RetroPie 0 or the older one right here or RetroPie 2 or 3. It's this link here. So simply click RetroPie 2 3 because I'm only selling out RetroPie 3. Save the file and download. Uh, I will fast forward this. All right, so once it's downloaded, I already downloaded it previously, but once it's downloaded, simply extract it to some place you can find it. Um, I'll extract mine to my desktop. I already have a copy, but I'll replace it. All right. So another thing you will need to um, get this installed or uh, put onto your SD card is this tool here. Um, so Win32 Disk Imager, you can find it here at this link up here, sourceforge.net slash project slash Win32 Disk Imager. You can simply download it. Um, make sure it's proper download. Simply down, download the, the file. I already previously installed it, but I will install it again for you guys. Really simple to do. Just pretty much just click next right through it. Okay. Oh, you have to be an administrator to run the application. That's no big deal. So I'll minimize this here. As you can see, here is the image file right here on the desktop. Find disk imager. And simply right click, run as administrator. There you go. There is the interface. So now you have to find, point it, the image file to your download. They unzip download. As you can see here. Oh. Click open. And then you select your device. Mine is the E drive. You can check that by going into your um, Windows Explorer here. And this is my removable disk. Uh, just be aware that anything that is on your disk, if you're using a, a previously used disk, um, it will be written over and reformatted. Okay. So here's my E drive. And simply click right. fixes it. There it goes. For some reason I had to format it. Anyway, you saw what I did there. I reformatted the disk. No problem. And then click right. Now 
Now this is a uh, not a simple NTFS copy of RetroPie. It uses a, a Linux base, which isn't directly compatible with Windows. So once you write the image to the SD card, the disk won't be readable within Windows. It will be readable on your Raspberry Pi. So once it's done, I will take the SD card out and put it in my RetroPie, uh, into my Raspberry Pi and boot it up. When it boots up, it will kind of inflate the disk. It will uncompress everything and uh, set up the final installation on the RetroPie, uh, on the Raspberry Pi to install RetroPie. Um, and then once that's done, um, we will go through the network settings and how to get the RetroPie and the Raspberry Pi onto your network so you can explore it through Windows so you can put your ROMs on it. So that's going to be the process once this is done. I'll speed this up here and fast forward it to get through. Okay, all done. So that's it for right now. And now I'm going to transfer over to the Raspberry Pi and uh, insert the SD card and I'll show you that process now. Alrighty, so here's our first run through of the Sony Raspberry Pi. Um, here is the SD card. I just pulled out the machine. It's ready to go. And here is my Raspberry Pi. Oh, that's a little blurry. Raspberry Pi. It's right out of the box. I have a keyboard all ready to go. All that's all you really need is to get started. I'll be using Bluetooth once it's, everything's connected. And I have an HDMI cable and a power plug already run to my TV just to use as a monitor. So here's the Raspberry Pi. You simply insert it in the back here. Right, so that is your operating system. Okay, I'm just gonna plug it in. And power. Once you plug it in, it automatically powers on. You see a lit, little red light. And you should see in display. Now you can see it's resizing the file light system. And there you go. So expanded the operating system. Now you have the full size of your disk available. And there we go. Now I don't have a keypad set up currently. I will be setting up Bluetooth controllers and um, installing ROMs shortly. But in order to install the ROMs, you have to add um, this to the Wi-Fi network. To do that, simply configure your Wi-Fi now I have my keyboard automatically plugged in. Okay, so here's French for five. So let's get into the menu here. configure the Wi-Fi. Scroll all the way to the bottom and select Wi-Fi. Connect the Wi-Fi. I'm connecting to my network here. So now I'm on my Wi-Fi. I should be able to detect it on any computer on my network. Let me exit this. 
Okay, so now that RetroPie is installed on your Raspberry Pi, um, and it's on your Wi-Fi network, now you can browse to it. As long as it's on the same network, you can browse to it. It's really easy to do. You simply load up your Windows Explorer here, and simply click backslash backslash RetroPie. And there you go. You have a couple different folders here. You can do your configurations for RetroPie. Um, you can also adjust the splash screens on here. But what we're interested in is the ROMs folder. Now in the, within the ROMs folder, there's a whole bunch of empty folders listed with different types of um, gaming systems. Okay. Um, any folder that is empty will not display on RetroPie um, when you have it loaded. So uh, you simply populate the folders that you want to use uh, your games on. So I have a folder here of some ROMs. Okay, um, I own all of these ROMs. Um, these are just backups of ones I own. And you simply copy them over. So I have some Atari, 20, old Atari 2600 games. Now I locate the Atari 2600 folder on the RetroPie and simply paste them. Okay, and then I have here some NES games, just a couple of them. Genesis. Last but not least, SNES. Now these are just ROMs that I own, um, but there's many more that you can put in here. Okay, now back to the Raspberry Pi, and now we just have to configure the Bluetooth controller, and um, that should do it, and any other settings that we may need. Alrighty, so I just did a quick reboot on the Raspberry Pi, and uh, I have here my Wii U controller that I'm going to be pairing with this system. <coughs> I still have the controller, uh, the uh, keyboard still plugged in. So when I reboot it, you'll see here now that... Uh, we have a couple different options. Um, we'll get to those in a second. So, but we're, what we're concerned with is the RetroPie menu. Okay, so get to the RetroPie, go into Bluetooth. All right, now we're gonna register a Bluetooth device. First, click the sync button on the back of your Wii U controller. And you should see the blue lights blinking there. Searching for Bluetooth devices. Uh, and then you notice here it says Nintendo, uh, RBL, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's the Bluetooth controller. And then click display yes, no, just click that. And there you go. Successfully registered and connected to. That'll do it. Now it's connected, but now we have to configure it. Right. So now we have to go into. Uh, so you whatever you set as your select button, you configure your input. There's a gamepad detected. Start with the Wii U controller. Hold the A button. Picked it up. So you set it up. D pad up, down, left, right. Okay. Okay, so you just go through and configure it and be good to go. Okay, I'll pause here and figure this and I'll show you the ROMs.
All right, it's all configured. And now you can select your operating, your, your games. I will show you uh, Super Nintendo. As you can see here, these are the ROMs we copied over. Turn up the volume here. And there, there you go. Now you can customize some certain settings on here. I'm not going to go through those for each emulator. But uh, yeah, go ahead and tinker with those. Uh, but that's the basic setup. There you go. And to reset, go back, you simply hit the start and select button. So, that's it. And you can go back to other emulators. Uh, let's try Sonic. Set that one. Let's try Atari. Now I haven't tested these at all. Let's see. Uh, classic. Some sound problems here. Oh, that goes. Yeah, it seems to be playing pretty well. I don't know what that sound glitch was. Okay, so overall, it plays pretty well. You can customize it a bit. There is a slight lag. I'm not sure if it's because of the Bluetooth um, or if it's my screen settings, but you can tinker with them in the configuration. I'm not going to get that in depth. This was just to get you to uh, start getting starting to the point of playing some games in your retro pie. Alright, I'll uh, see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.